Now, we're going to take, we, we did the overall anatomy, kidneys, ureter, bladder, urethra. Now we're going to take the kidneys and look at the microscopic units, the little microscopic things going on inside the kidney. The nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. And there's millions of nephrons in each kidney, looking at these tiny little microscopic functional units of the kidneys. These are the tiny little filters that will take the blood and turn it into urine. All right, so the nephron has two parts. It's composed of tubules, which are hollow tubes, and blood vessels. So you're going to know all of these parts. You will, trust me. Trust the O. Wusa. This is what you need to know. This picture. All right? This is what this is more accurately what it looks like. We simplify it to look like this. All right? So, I'm going to do it on the board cuz sometimes it's easier to draw and explain as we go along. Okay, so the first part of the nephron is a big tangle or a cluster of blood vessels. So blood flow comes in this way, it goes through this tangle of blood vessels, and then it leaves this way. Okay? And remember, millions of these in each kidney. This is like in and then out. This structure right here is called the glomerulus. The glomerulus is blood vessels. So basically, this little artery here is part of a whole series of little arteries that came off the aorta. Remember I said the aorta sends a lot of blood to the kidneys, so it's coming this way. Around the glomerulus, we start with the tubules, hollow tubes. And the first part of the hollow tube is like a cup and it sits right over that cluster, that ball of blood vessels. And this first part is called Bowman's capsule. So Bowman's capsule just simply sits like a cup or like a hood around the glomerulus. The next part of the tubule is a twisty, turny, windy type of tubule. I just did a couple of waves here because it's really hard to draw, but I'll show you the picture again. It's very twisted and topsy-turvy kind of. This part of the tubule is called the proximal convoluted tubule. What's proximal mean? Closer to the beginning or closer to the point of attachment. So proximal here, it's closer to the beginning. How about convoluted? What's convoluted mean? Convoluted means not straight. So proximal convoluted tubule, it's the twisty turny tubule that's closer to the beginning. That's all it means. Then it takes a turn and goes this way. It's going down. So we call that the descending limb, right? Because it's going down. Descending limb, and then it makes a turn and comes back up. This turn right here is called the loop of Henley. Not Helen, Henley. So if this was a descending limb, what do you think this one is? Ascending limb, very simple. After you hit the ascending limb, then you get another twisty, turny, windy tubule. If this one was proximal, what's this one going to be? Distal. distal. So this is the distal convoluted tubule. Okay? That's the basic structure of the nephron. Then a bunch of these tubules connect into this structure here. There's fewer of these. This is the collecting duct. And the collecting duct dumps into a place called the calyx. So that's the basic structure of the nephron. Now, just as an overview, blood filters through the glomerulus. Blood is being pushed, the strength of the blood being pushed out of the heart pushes the blood through the glomerulus. So it's being pushed through here. As it gets pushed through the glomerulus, there's holes in the walls of the glomerulus. And as it's being pushed through, most of the water and dissolved substances in the blood get pushed out of these blood vessels 
and into Bowman's capsule. Anybody remember what the transport mechanism was called that uses a push? Filtration, very good. Filtration, this is the best example of filtration in the body right here. The substances are not moving from high to low concentration, which would be what? Diffusion. Remember, high to low concentration was diffusion. They're not moving because of a difference in conf concentration. They're moving because they're being pushed through. It's like if you consider the walls of the glomerulus made of like mesh, so just the water and small particles get through, and when they go through, they get collected in this first part of the tubule, which is Bowman's capsule. If you think about blood, blood is not just blood cells, right? Blood is water, electrolytes, nutrients, um, proteins, all kinds of stuff. When it goes through the glomerulus, the red blood cells are too big, the proteins are too big, they can't get through the walls of the glomerulus, but everything else can. The water can, sodium ions, chloride ions, calcium ions, that kind of stuff can get pushed through here, especially the water. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the slide for just a minute. Glomerulus there, Bowman's capsule, proximal convoluted tubule, descending limb, loop of Henle, ascending limb, distal convoluted tubule, collecting duct. You need to know that pathway. This is more what it looks like. Simply, very simply, these are all urine tubes. This is showing you how the blood vessels surround those tubes. And the name of those blood vessels are peritubular capillaries. What does peri mean? Around. around. So they're peritubular, they're the capillaries that are around the tubules. That's all it means. And I said the collecting ducts dump into the calyx or the calyces. That's these little regions right here. These little pieces that come off the renal pelvis. That's the calyx. The calyces open up into the renal pelvis and the renal pelvis dumps into the ureter. Thank you.